to the scriptures. We're going to Philippians. We're going to the book of Philippians. Philippians 1 and 9. We're going to the book of Philippians. Philippians 1 and 9. When you have it, say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The scripture says in Philippians 1, let me go up a verse, 6. Philippians 1 and 6. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he would have begun a good work in you, we're performing until the day of Jesus Christ. Can I read it again for you to understand? Being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And if God just give us breath and a few minutes of time, we want to use for a fault. Your future is greater than your failure. Your future is greater than your failure. If anybody can witness with me, you ought to give God a hand to pray right here and right now. This is for everyone who has fallen in failure in your life. There's good news, my brothers and my sisters. God is still gracious. And God is still merciful. And I may understand that faith obtains his mercy. Even when you fall flat on your back, if you look up, you can get up. If you fall on your face, if you push up in prayer, you can get up. And I know I've had some failures in my life. But I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is not through with me yet. Is there anybody thanking God and glad and believe that no matter where you've been, God is not through with you yet? I made some bad decisions in my life. But I'm so glad that God has the last say so over it. I realize that no matter what, my life is not made, meant to be and not made to be a failure. I don't have to live in the land of failure. I can trust God. And how many know when you trust in God, God can take you higher than you could ever go before. Through faith, along with the power of God, we can recover. God's grace is greater than your mistakes and your shortcomings. God can help you conquer circumstances, even in a COVID-19 environment. How do I understand that God still strengthen you in a COVID-19 environment? I've heard testimonies this, this morning that God is still prospering people with purpose, even in the midst of a pandemic. Is there anybody that can witness and testify that God is able? And I come to tell you, my brother and sister, mask up don't mean you got to shut up. Masking up don't mean you got to shut off your faith in God. Regardless of what you see and how you feel, the truth is the future is brighter with God. See, that God kind of faith, that God kind of faith, I'm talking about the God kind of faith that will help you press past your fears. I wish Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was here. Maybe he can share some insight with us. When he said, we must build dikes of courage on the past fear. We got to build dikes of courage to hold back fear. Courage is the power of the mind to overcome fear. And faith is taking a step even when it don't seem, when you don't see the whole staircase. Faith is taking a step even when you don't see the whole 
Stir case. Is there anybody trusting God? You have to understand that we need faith. Without faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please him. And anybody here want to be pleasing unto God, that means you need faith. Faith allows you to praise God in a place of panic in a pandemic. Faith will allow you to still trust Christ even in the midst of COVID. Faith holds your beliefs together. And it makes you aware every day of your life that you are not a finished product. God is still working on you. Is there anybody glad today that God hadn't discarded you? That he's still working on you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're a miracle in the making. <laughs> you have not reached your full potential yet. The work of God, the work that God has began in your life. He's able to finish it for your greater and his glory. What God has had installed in your life, he will able, he is able, he surely will finish everything that he has your life designed for. Then if I understand that God is able to complete it, you may be in the midst of your greatest battle of your life. Yes, and all that, and I understand my brothers and sisters, yes, and all that we see in our country, where we live, where we call home, it is a test of our faith. Points to the fact that we've come a long way, but we got a long way to go. Just because things and circumstances and society seem to be failing, how many understand God can will not fail? And we cannot fail if we have God in our lives. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you, that he may sift you as we. But I prayed for thee. Is there anybody saying that God has prayed for thee that your faith fails not? And then he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Is there anybody here able to have a prayer life that you can hear the prayer of God and then turn around and pray for your neighbor? Pray for those enemies. Is anybody saying the Bible says, love your enemies. Strengthen thy brother when thou art converted. And I understand that we're going through a conversion process here today in the United States of America. Yes, we must encourage ourselves that in the midst of our personal failures, uh -huh. our future is greater. Hell may have made an all out attack against you. Maybe you're in the middle of a trial. Maybe you're in the middle of an affliction or a setback that you can't see your way out of. Yes, yes. But I have good news today that God is able to bring you out. Is there anybody trusting God today? Is there anybody understand that you got news you can use that God will give you strength without a shadow of a doubt to work your way out in his name, whatever it is that you're going through. God will bring to pass what he promised. I don't care hell does not have enough devil and you don't have enough enemies to keep God's promise and purpose from being fulfilled in your life. I'm going to say it again. Hell doesn't have enough devil and you don't have enough enemies to keep God's purpose and plan from being fulfilled over your life. I understand that God did not bring you this far to leave you now. He, he didn't bring you this far to forsake you. How many believe and trust that God has invested too much in my life for me to give up now? Look at somebody say, hell is not in charge. You don't belong to the devil. I come to tell you, you don't belong to the devil. You got to claim the ownership of who you belong to in your life. If there anybody can shout, I belong to God. I know in the midst of the heartache and the heavy moments and the pain 
And sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm discouraged. Sometimes I don't find my way. Sometimes I get aggravated. And help me to understand that many people are living in depression. But understand at the end of the day, you don't belong to hell. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to God. And I'm going to say that God be for you. He's more than the world against you. Look at somebody and say, focus on Jesus. And Satan does not control your future. Hell does not have the power to stop you. Just as the devil could not keep Jesus in the grave. Neither can he keep you in the trial, setback, or affliction. In any way. I mean, why you say that by him? First John 4 and 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. How many understand? You are greater, your future is greater than your failure. If they don't understand that you got greatness inside of you, if you have a relationship with Christ and Christ has entered your life, that God has greater inside of you, all you got to do is tap in it through prayer and praise. Is there anybody willing to pray, pray, pray and praise God in the midst of this pandemic? So what should I do then, Parham, what I'm going through? What should I do? Preaching? I got heartaches, I got pain. Family member down to COVID. Man told me I got it, I ain't feeling well. What should I do, poor him? I need to tell you, my brother and sister, no matter what, God may not always change the situation, but he's able to change you in the midst of the situation. So what I need to tell you is forget not the Lord. Shout at your neighbor, wave at him. Don't get close to him, but just wave at him and say, forget not the Lord. And I got five on it. 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 I got five to stay alive with God's grace. Five things. Number one, read. Read. What you ought to do this season? I'm locked down. I'm on quarantine. Read. 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 Said, if you want to keep folk ignorant, put it in the confines of the book. Right. Read the word of God. Broad is your mind and deep is your intellect for who God is. And you'll understand and you'll see that he is a present help in the time of trouble. He's the same God that delivered the children of Israel through the Red Sea. He is the same God that Heal the woman with the issue of blood. He is the, you gotta go help me here. He is the same God that paid to, two fishes and five loaves of bread and fed a multitude. God specializes in bringing people out of trouble. Is there anybody can say hallelujah? Have he ever brought you out of any trouble in your life? I know y'all looking like y'all ain't never been through nothing. I've come to tell you, I done been through something. Y'all go help me here. I've been some place I shouldn't have been. I should have been in my grave, sleeping right now. But God, thank God for his grace and mercy in the midst of my trouble. When you're at home and on your job, wherever you may be, no matter what, if hell has broken loose in your life, you got to know by the word of God that God is your shield and your buckler. What that mean, Paul Hill? That means he's your protector. Is there anybody understand that God is keeping you, that he's protecting you 24 hours a day? West Memphis don't have enough police officers to take care of your household, but I thank God today. God sent an angel. Is there anybody glad today that God sent an angel by you? What shouldn't have, what, what should have happened didn't happen because God stepped in. And so read your word during this pandemic. Locked in. So motion. You can't go where you want to go. Sometimes God needs to slow us down to get our attention. Read your word. And then number two, remember. But then 
tell you to write a paper what you read and you can't write, they call you a slow reader. Uh -huh. They do. Uh -huh. Been there, I've done that. Often. They call you a slow reader. So when you read, remember. That means put it in your heart, put it in your mind. And so that when you remember what you're doing in the midst of trial, in the midst of crisis, you can recall and reflect. Anybody can thank God today you can recall and reflect where God has brought you from? And know how I understand that I'm praying every day, God give me insight so I can handle the things that, I, that, is, not, that is out of my sight. Give me strength so I can see where I'm going. If you took me through there, I believe you can bring me here. Look at somebody and say, learn from your mistakes. And then not only when you read, and not only you remember, but then you got to recognize. Recognize what God has already done for you. If anybody can praise him on what he already done for you, he don't have to do anything else for me to praise him. He's been too good to me. Psalm 124 and 1. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, is anybody glad today that you recognize that God is on your side? Uh -huh. yes, sir. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. It's a faith walk. Yes, well, you understand, you got faith to understand that your future is greater than your faith. Yes, recognize you've come this far. By faith. African Americans, we got to recognize that we come this far by faith. And when we leave faith out of it, y'all to go help me here. We start going backwards. But when you put faith in your heart and faith in the forefront, your future, our future is bright. And then all that do you read, but then you remember. Then you recognize. And thirdly, you recognize and fourthly, you reaffirm. Reaffirm what you mean, Paul Ham. Our faith is in God. Yes, sir. Not a paycheck. Right. Uh -huh. Not in my bank account. Come on, come on, come on. I made a mistake the other day. I was paying a bill online. And I paid with my credit card. And, uh, and it was a substantial amount. Uh -huh. uh, and I was in a rush. And I hit, instead of select payment item, I select pay off. Didn't know it. Yeah, one Monday, one Friday, all of it hit my bank account. I looked at first lady Paul M and said, girl, you... <laughs> Say, I'm sweating them. What I'm going to do now? But I thank God in the midst of it all. God, I never missed a meal. Y'all are going to help me here. Didn't miss a bill. Pay some things that need to be paid. What I'm trying to tell you, your faith not to be tied to your paycheck, nor people or possessions, but your faith ought to be tied for God. How many know that God will supply your every need according to his riches? And y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, ain't like y'all ain't never been broke. I've been broke, y'all ain't gonna help me out. I done put sugar in between two slices of bread and caught in a hope sandwich, but I thank God today. I know how to make it broke and I know how to make it if I got money. Cause my faith is built. <laughs> I'm nothing less than Jesus and his. Is there anybody got your faith in the right place? Take some faith. Left a job, a trucking job that paid me a lot. To come down and say, God, I want to be a humble servant from you. But I'm still standing. Don't tell me what my God can do. What he's done for others, he also... That's why you can't beat me praising God. God has been too good. If there ain't nobody got the testimony, I ain't bragging on me. I'm bragging on God. If there ain't nobody who can brag on God, that show your, your future is greater than your failure. Number five. Let me go back. Number one. You need to know this. Read. Number two. Remember. Number three. 
Recognize. Number four. Reaffirm. Number five. Remove. Some of the obstacles of hate that reside in us. You got to remove it. Those weapons of racism that attack us deep within, we must remove. Hebrews 12 and, 12 and 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and, 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 and every sin that so easily entangles us. And then let us run with patience the race marked out for us. Look at somebody say, you call to make a difference. Your future is greater than your fear. Then Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That is your reasonable service. If they don't understand that God sees it within his reason for you to be saved, blessed, and highly favored, no matter where you are now, your future is greater than your failure. Let me remind you. Philippians 1 and 6, my brothers and sisters, should be encouragement to each and every one of us. Philippians 1 and 6, be in comfort of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it unto the completion, unto the day of Jesus Christ. So my feet are it is. Uh, get ready to leave my feet are wet, it is greater. Yes, so I look at the word greater. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see the is very is a G. Yes, the G lets me know that I thank God today for his grace. Is there anybody in here can thank God today for his grace and his mercy? Is there anybody in here can thank God for his grace over your life? You need his unmerited favor that will take you to a place called greater and higher heights in your life. If there anybody want to do greater, you ought to say thank you, Jesus. Well, in the word greater, I see there is, there is an R. The R lets me know that you got to learn how to realize that you can't do this on your own. If there anybody understand that you need the law. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But when a little word greater, I see that he is. They is an evil. The evil lets me know that everything works together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Is there anybody believe that God got everything in the power of his hand? Somebody say hallelujah. I said, somebody say hallelujah in here. So I lead the word greater. I see the day is. The day is a day. The day lets me know that you got to learn how to acknowledge God. And when you acknowledge God, He will. Is there anybody know He will direct your path? Somebody say amen. Say amen. When I look at the word greater, I see the day is. There is a tea. The tea lets me know that I can make it through the test and the trial that come in my life. Is there anybody here know that you know that God will bring you through your test and your trials? They come to make you strong. Is there anybody in here stronger than here? Is there anybody in here stronger? You ought to say yeah. Oh, yes. He's able. Somebody say yes. Yes. He's able. When I look at the word greater, I see the day is. The day is a year. The E reminds me if I'm going to go greater in Jesus' name, I got to enter.
wisdom, his gaze with faith giving, and into his course with praise. Is there anybody here? Gotta thank you, Jesus, and you can bless his holy name. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, well, yeah. Good God Almighty, well, look at the word great of the is vain and all the honest men know to refuse to give up oh God is there anybody know that God will never give up oh you I tried the man and how many know that he will I said he will I said he will I said he will be there for you he will uh, never leave you, uh, nor forsake you. Somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, for him, the Bible says uh, that he hung, bled, and died. So living, he loved me, died, he saved me. Buried, he carried me, sin far away. Rising, he justified. Freeing me forever, and one of these old days, he's coming back again. Is there any believers in the house? Say yeah, oh yeah, yes. He's able, he's able. Give God a hand of praise if you know he's able. If you know he'll do it. This is your opportunity. I like this old song, Big Mom used to say. Hallelujah. What is this? They don't say I'm acting strange. What is this love? Makes me want to run. So whatever we're dealing with in our life, 
I know that you're able to mold it and manage it and make it far greater right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for a peaceful transition in the White House. We pray for those that love love on. We pray for our strength in a pandemic. And we thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for being there with us. So we realize that we need you today. So I pray that you'll touch that sinner. I pray that you'll strengthen that saint. In the name of Jesus. So we put the churches in your hands. I pray that you'll keep the all over. I pray that you'll bless the time. And the offers that are giving in the house today. Bless the hands that are giving it right now in the name of Jesus. Let it be fruitful and multiply. Let it be prosperous, God, in all their ways. Open up the window of heaven. And pour out a blessing we have not known. Enough to receive. I know I've been born again. So I thank you, God, for this time that we spent. Pray something was said I know that would please your kingdom again. and let your I presence come down on all of us. Again. Let your spirit fall fresh in the name of Jesus. And we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence. I lift up my holy hand unto the holy place of you. God, thank you, God, for you the part of him today. I hope that I decrease so that you can increase. And I lift up this hand today in the name of Jesus. Now may the grace of God in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide. Henceforth now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Will the children of God say, Amen? Amen.